Hi, my name is Valentin Rothberg. I'm working on all things related to containers at Red Hat and want to talk about bootable containers in this short presentation. You may have already heard of bootable containers, especially since Red Hat Summit this year, 2024. They've been circling in the open source community, on Hacker News, and a lot on the press as well. I believe that bootable containers will change how we think about the IT infrastructure of the future. So let's get to it. Over the last decade, OCI containers have become the de facto way to deploy a complete functioning Linux application. A large set of practices and tooling have evolved around them. Bootable containers are a modern, opinionated way of deploying, configuring, and managing immutable image-based Linux systems using those pre-existing practices and tooling. Just like ordinary application containers, you can build bootable containers by using existing container technologies such as Docker files and with existing tooling such as Podman, Docker, or BuildKit, and so on. You can further store these images on any container registry such as Quay.io, Docker Hub, the GitHub container registry, or any internal container registry you may have running on your network. Bootable containers for me are a natural evolution of container technologies. For over a decade, containers have evolved into an industry standard of bundling, shipping, and deploying applications. Bootable containers built on top of these existing technologies and extend containers to include the entire operating system along with a Linux kernel to allow for a comprehensive container native workflow and user experience. A bootable container image ships the entire OS, the kernel, bootloader, drivers, well, everything you need to boot an entire system. The ultimate goal here is to install the contents of the bootable container image on a host. Updates to the host are also applied via bootable container images. That means that we pull updates from a standard container registry, just as we did for over a decade for application containers. I find that pretty, pretty exciting. So let's have a look at how to deploy and update these containers and the systems. This figure depicts the life cycle of a bootable container and the different steps required from building to deploying to updating systems. Once a bootable container image has been built, it needs to be converted to a disk image. The disk image itself can then be used to install the content in the target environment, let's say a public cloud instance. You might also want to push the container image, the bootable container image, to your target container registry. To update existing systems, the process can be repeated. That is, building a new image and pushing it to a registry. And once pushed, the deployed systems can pull down the image from the registry and reboot into the new image. That is really, really exciting. Let's have a look at the tooling involved. Bootsy is at the core and center of bootable containers. It is a command line tool that ships with a number of systemd services and timers to manage a bootable container. Among other things, Bootsy is responsible for downloading and queuing updates and can be used by other higher level tools to manage the system and also inspect the system status. For that reason, Bootsy is an integral part of each bootable container image. There are several ways how a system can be updated. By default, Bootsy systems perform time-based updates via systemd timer. For event-based updates, the Bootsy fetch apply update servers can be triggered, and manual updates can just be triggered by executing Bootsy upgrade and rebooting the system. In case an update goes wrong, Bootsy is capable of also rolling back to the previous known-to-work image with a typical seamless AB update. For more details, please check out the linked upstream documentation of Bootsy, which goes into great detail of all these steps. Bootsy systems follow the concept of an immutable operating system. Apart from Etsy and var, all directories are mounted read-only once deployed on a physical or virtual machine. However, during a container build, the entire file system is writable. So you can install packages and modify the OS to your needs just as with other containers. The fact that most parts of the file system are mounted read-only is an important attribute of deployed bootable containers and really something to consider carefully when preparing workloads and updates. 
the upstream documentation goes into those details and includes some best practices as well. So I highly recommend checking them out. So at that point, I guess you may wonder already which distributions ship bootable containers. So let's have a look at that as well. The base images of Fedora and CentOS stream are listed and continuously updated on the base images page in the Fedora docs. So go check them out. When you have the slides, you can just click on Fedora, CentOS stream and Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and the link will guide you directly to the right, right place. The rel Bootsy images can be found in the Red Hat ecosystem catalog. Working with these requires a Red Hat account for sure, but you can get a no cost subscription by joining the Red Hat developer program in just a few clicks. You further need to log into the Red Hat container registry and register your machine with subscription manager. If you are using Podman Desktop, which I highly recommend, you may install the Red Hat account extension, which automates most of the process. As mentioned before, bootable containers can be built with existing tooling, such as Docker files, container files, and Podman. That means you can use any existing Bootsy base image and customize it to your needs in a container built just as shown on this slide, right? Here you see a Docker file and it just works. For more information and best practices, please refer to the docs link on the bottom of this slide. Updates for bootable containers happen in the form of pulling a new image and rebooting into it. But how do we install a fresh Bootsy system? While Bootsy supports installing a Bootsy container on top of an existing system, it is more common to convert a bootable container image into a so-called disk image, such as an ISO, a RAW, QCOW, to you name it, right? Just to provision a new system. You can convert bootable container images into a disk image with Bootsy Image Builder, which itself is executed inside a container. Bootsy Image Builder is a feature rich tool that further enables you to inject users, manage SSH keys, and also define a partition layout. It's really powerful and I highly recommend to check out the docs upstream. Potman Desktop also ships with a Bootsy extension, which allows you to install and convert Bootsy images in just a few clicks, highly recommended. For local testing, you may also find Potman Bootsy to be of use. It's another command line tool that automates the conversion of disk images or two disk images and spins up a VM that you can then SSH into. It's really, really, really convenient in a local dev test cycle on your workstation. At that point, we have learned the nature and the concepts behind bootable containers. From building on top of available Bootsy base images to testing them locally with Botman Bootsy to understanding how to update already deployed systems. Well, there is a lot to discover and you're welcome to join the community and the listed links here may help you to navigate it. Thanks for listening.